Hello. In the lesson about limits, I didn't uh, talk about sequences. And this is what I'd like to tell you now before we start uh, approaching some examples. A sequence, it's actually a function which I'm going to denote with f of n and uh, it's usually described by a general term, as you can see here, uh, denoted with tn. This is just a common way to denote uh, a sequence in general form. What makes a sequence different than just a regular function is the fact that its domain is the set of natural numbers. This is also why the notation is preferred with n instead of the usual x for the independent variable. I don't know if this helps you, but uh, you can think of these uh, sequences as discrete functions, while the other functions, the regular functions that we used to that take uh, values from the set of real numbers, those are continuous functions. So those are representing more of an analog uh, response. But the analogy with um, discrete and analog may not help you just yet. Anyway, this is in short what a sequence is all about. So as you can see, there isn't much I can tell you about it. That's why I didn't even include it in the lesson. The best way to understand uh, better what I'm talking about with these sequences is to uh, approach a couple of examples. So for that reason, let's uh, start with the first example, point A. I'm going to take this uh, sequence of numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so forth, and I'm even going to help you to give you the general term that generated all these terms, so it's going to be 2 at power n minus 1. And I'm going to continue as well. So for this sequence, what we are trying to determine is if this sequence is convergent or not. An easy way to uh, determine if this um, sequence is convergent is to represent it on a graph. So we're going to take uh, each value for n, beginning from 1, and the f of n for each corresponding value of uh, n we already have the values here based on the general term we can generate as many more values as we want so let's actually start to represent these numbers on the graph the first term in this sequence corresponds to a value of 1 for n so on the graph i'm going to put a point of the coordinates 1 and 1 for n and f of n right? The next value we see in the sequence is 2. So I'm going to put a point at the value 2 and 2 on the graph. When n is 3, the third term of our sequence is 4. So I'm going to have 3 and 4. I'm going to place a point right there. And I'm going to continue the same with uh, when, when n is 4. The fourth term is 8. So we place a point at the coordinates 4 and 8. And we continue with 5, the fifth term is 16, so place a point at 5 and 16, and uh, it's already exceeding our uh, uh, graph here, but we already notice that this function is going to increase continuously, it's increasing actually faster and faster, and it doesn't really have a limit. So I'm going to conclude that the sequence is not convergent, or simply we can say it's uh, divergent. Since we now know about the concept of limit, and this kind of approach takes a bit too much time, as you can imagine, graphing every time for every simple exercise such as this, to plot a graph, that's a little too much work for something as simple as this. So why not use the concept of limit to do the same thing like we did uh, graphically? But this graphical representation helps you understand because visually you can see what happens with the values. They are increasing and uh, they don't really have a limit. So let's see how we can approach that with a limit. In this case, the general term Tn is 2 at power n minus 1. So it's important to actually determine this uh, general term Tn. In our case, it's very easy. It's, I'm just reading it from, from above. It's 2 at power n minus 1. But this is very important to have because now I can take the concept of limit and solve this example in a much more uh, 
elegant way. So I'm going to say limit when n approaches infinity of tn is, let's express this uh, term explicitly, 2 at power n minus 1. And uh, it's easy to determine that this is equal to infinity. Or we can say that the limit does not exist, basically, because it doesn't approach a numeric value. It continuously grows as n grows. Let's have a look at another example. So let's say at point B I'm going to choose the following sequence 2, 3 by 2, 4 by 3, 5 by 4, 6 by 5, and so forth. And again I'm going to give you the general term is n plus 1 over n. I'm going to do the same like before. Let's represent all these values of the sequence on a graph with the independent variable n and uh, the y-axis is basically f of n. I'm going to have the first term it was when n is 1 our first term it was 2. I'm going to represent this point of coordinates 1 and 2. When n is 2 the second term is 3 by 2 which is right here at 1.5 right? And I can uh, represent all the other uh, points. So when n is 3 4 by 3 or 1 point uh, period 3 it's about there when n is 4 I'm gonna have 5 by 4 which is 125 so exactly in the intersection of those lines and then when n is 5 it's 6 by 5 so 1.2 well this I'm starting to uh, estimate to be like that right so I'm going to uh, pretty much estimate the rest of the points if you uh, don't really get uh, a feeling of what is the value that this sequence is going to uh, converge to, get a bigger uh, value. Since you have the general term, it's very easy to take, for example, uh, when n is 100, we're going to have 101 divided by 100, which is 1.01. .01. So you see, I started at 2, but I'm getting as close as possible to 1. So when you see that the higher the value of n is, your sequence is converging towards a particular value, but you can't really figure it out from the uh, limited terms that you have. Well, you can use this general term. Let's say if n is 1 million, then I can calculate the general term tn to be 1.000001, which is almost 1, right? So we can see a lot clearer on a very big number. Or if you just want to use your scientific calculator, you can't really use the infinity on that, but you can use a very big number and the result is going to be much easier to um, see. However, you want to be able to find these results in a much more elegant way. So just like before, let's calculate the limit when n approaches infinity of uh, Tn. And explicitly I'm going to say limit when n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over n. In order to solve a limit such as this, I notice that n approaches infinity and I have a fraction in which the numerator and denominator have the same degree. I will factor out n in both numerator and denominator to get rid of that and I'm going to end up with an expression that's a lot easier to handle. Limit when n approaches infinity from in the numerator, like I said, I factor out n times 1 plus 1 over n because that's what's left in the numerator. And the denominator, basically, it was just n, so it's simply that. You can see how we can reduce 1n in uh, both numerator and denominator. And the expression is going to become limit when n approaches infinity from 1 plus 1 over n. We see how this limit it's actually very easy to determine because when n approaches infinity n only appears here in the denominator of this fraction 1 over n so 1 divided by infinity by a very big number 1 divided by a very big number is going to be almost 0 so the limit of this is going to be 0 so 1 plus 0 therefore this limit equals to 1 and this is exactly the same result as we got earlier, only that it's a lot more elegant and uh, 
it should be a lot faster to uh, determine than representing it on a graph and uh, taking each value individually. So we can conclude that this sequence is converging to 1. This is how you work with sequences and how you can determine if they are convergent or divergent and uh, also I've shown you how uh, you can actually uh, calculate the limit of a sequence. So I hope this helps you in your work. Thanks for watching.